Now, in order to create the bowl, we have to, and to do embroidery on it, I'm going to start by using just the regular rope. So what you want to do is you want to select a cotton rope. Um, so you have to check out the ropes. There's, you can use lots of them, but some are stiffer than others. This one I got online, and it's just a quarter inch cotton uh, macrame rope. And it, this one you can stitch through. So you don't... Uh, Dritz makes one that's really nice to use. It's also a quarter of an inch, and they even have that at Joann's, and it's made by Dritz. The only thing is it has a polyester core, which is no big deal. Uh, it'll it'll still sew through it. It's a tiny bit stiffer than the cotton, uh, but, it, but it will work. Uh, what you want to stay away from is that treated clothesline. Now, the, the regular clothesline that's untreated is fine. The, the treated stuff is rather stiff because they'll put a coating on it so that it'll resist the weather. So if you're going to just use the rope, it helps to take some fray check or fray block, any of those, and then you're going to just saturate a little bit of it, let it dry completely, and then when you cut through the middle of it, then it's not likely to fray. If you don't put the fray check on there, it, it just uh, frays all over the place. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to coil this. She knows when that camera's on, doesn't she? Okay, so I'm going to coil it a little bit. I'm going to stick some pins in here. Just put them, just pierce all the way through. About, oh, make about a, about a one inch coil. Just to get started. And just Pierce that in there, get that kind of tight in there. Okay, then you're going to go so that it's coiling clockwise, and you're just going to put a straight, st straight stitch through it and make an X. And that will get, get you started. I just want the center to be wrapped in fabric. So I'm taking a one inch strip of fabric. It doesn't have to be on the bias. It helps to coil it up like that because it makes it easier to handle. And this would be the same as if you're going to cover the all of the rope or wrap all of this rope in, in the uh, fabric or not, or just a little bit. I'm going to use it sporadically. So I'm going to just start to coil. And I'm going to put this at about, wrap it, overlap it about a quarter of an inch like that. Okay, now, to, so I don't have to keep holding this over here. I'm going to put a pin through it. Okay, and now and I'm going to just overlap this, keep coiling at about a 45 degree angle till I have about four or five inches wrapped. Okay, and then put a pin in here so that it will hold. Okay. Now in order to create the beginning, I'm going to take that end of that fabric and twist it until it's tight and put it under one end and start to coil into where that you put the little twist. Okay. Don't worry about these little threads sticking out. They're going to be zigzagged in anyway. Okay. And I'm going to coil it If you need to stop and wrap some more, just put a pin through the coil. You don't want to use thin, flimsy pins. So this, you definitely want to have a few pins to hold it. Just pierce through the rope. Okay, and I need to wrap a little more, so I'm going to. I don't want to undo what I've already done. Okay, now I'm going to continue to wrap some more. That's enough for now. Need another pin. The clunk was Lily. She came up to shop, didn't find anything interesting. Okay, now we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch an X. Uh, I changed to an open toe foot and it would be nice to have one that has a, a leveling pin. 
Okay, so I'm going to just I'm taking the open toe foot off because see I don't like that angle. And I'm going to push that up, push the leveling pin in and go. Alrighty, so I'm going to hand walk this a couple of them. I have a size 14 needle in here. I'm just going very slowly. Okay, so I'm just going to sew all the way across. Going really slowly at first. I'm going to turn it around and go back. Into the center, pivot, and I'm just slowly doing an X. And this is actually the hardest part of the whole thing. Oh, I got that leveling pin flipped off. There we go. Okay, I don't want that pin to get caught. Coil is caught. <laughs> there we go. And back to the center. And I have put this the wrong way. Well, I'm going to break this thread anyway. Okay. That is just good enough for there. And I'm just going to back tack. No one. <laughs> this I'm going to take this foot off and I'm going to switch to the open toe foot okay and I'm going to give it some more coiling or wrapping actually I want that middle to be really not much bigger than that so what I'm going to do is cut this because I only want the center of it to be with fabric so I'm going to cut this okay. all right I'm just going to put a pin for now and I'm just going to sew off that anyway Okay, so I want this to coil. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to now set my machine to a fairly wide zigzag to at least a five, and we'll try that out. I want my length to be about three and a half length on the zigzag. Five, and I'll do a three length, and let's just see how that goes. Okay, and now we're just going to start to zigzag around the coil. Just keep going. Okay. I'm pivoting a lot. Of, I could put the pivot, you know, I'm going to put the pivot feature on so I don't have to keep. Right, so every time we get on the outside. quite take that pin out yet. Actually I can now move this over to here and put that pin just to hold it a little bit until it gets big enough to handle. Right now it's kind of little. I'm going to make that stitch length maybe two and a half in here. Now And I'm just going to follow this coil around. Now where I've got this sticking out, I'm just going to clip it. It's extra. So now you want to start to pull. Now you don't want to pull this too tight because it will start to dome on you. And now it's easier to turn because it's a bigger radius. Get 
It's easier if you have the rope coiled and to your left as you go around because that gives you clear sight as to what you're doing. So I'm just pulling it taut, not tight. As this goes around. And you can now start to pick up speed as it's coiling. Now I'm going to keep doing this. Now I'm going to make this, now you could just stop when it's about the size of a coaster, but I'm actually going to sew this till it's about maybe six inches or so in diameter and then I'm going to stop and then we'll embroider it. a little bit just scoot back <laughs> there I missed <laughs> I'm going to take a wider zigzag than that so and you can I don't want it any bigger than, than six inches because of the fact that I want this to fit inside the five by seven frame when we're embroidering it. So right now it's at less than four inches. So a little more. It does help if you have your your table or your machine recessed into a table because now you can keep this flat. Um, if not, you probably want to use an extension table. If you're going especially making something big like a placemat or a rug, because you can take this all the way to make a nice big rug. And to be honest with you, I'm rather surprised that this is sewing this easily. I am amazed, actually. Okay, that's enough. Just going to finish right about here. I'm just going to back tack. Okay, and cut. Now we're ready to go to the embroidery machine. But I picked this one because it stitches out fast. Okay, okay I've loaded my design into the machine. I'm just using a, just a red work leaf design that I came up with that sort of goes in a circle. Nothing fancy, but you could put any, any design you like that'll fit in your area. It, so you can embroider anything. Probably I wouldn't pick things that are so dense that, are, that, are, that will destroy the rope. So I would pick something moderate. The other thing I want to do is go to my settings page and slow that machine down. To about 350. Don't want to go too fast. The other thing is my embroidery foot height. This is about a quarter of an inch thick so I'm going to raise this embroidery foot height to 3.0 or to 0.3 and let's see what happens there. Okay so I'm just going to hoop my stabilizer and I'm using Aquaset which is a water soluble adhesive and you want to hoop it with the shiny side up but you could also use a sticky back stabilizer. You could use a regular tear away and use uh, an adhesive spray like KK2000 or 505 spray. The first one is going to give me a circle. And 
just giving you an idea of what this is. Actually, this is just giving me an idea where to place this. I'm going to take the stitch back to the zero position, which is right at the beginning, because I'm going to, this is just telling me what to wet. So I'm just taking my sponge, and it's, you don't want it drenching, you just want it to be tacky. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute until it becomes tacky, which takes about a minute. Place this in here. You want to put this so that you remain coiling from the left. Put this in the exact center. If you want to be sure that you have everything just right, then I would go to, if you have a machine that has a camera, like the Destiny, the Dream, I'm going to hit the camera and let it scan, and I'm going to make sure that it's in the exact center. Okay, I'm gonna look at the design here. Is it? Actually, I think I can move it over a little bit. Let me move this just a little bit. I'll go down. There we go. I think now I've got it like I think I like it. I'm going to put a piece of water soluble stabilizer. I call it Solvi because that's what we it was always called. I'm going to skip forward to the neck to I'm going to skip over that circular stitch because I used my camera. I know it's just right. So I'm going to skip that and go directly to embroidering. This is a little on the thin side, so I'm actually going to embroider this step twice. So Now I'm seeing a little bit of flagging going on. You see how it's sort of pouncing up and down? Stop that, and I'm going to go back to my settings page, and I'm going to lower that, maybe about, let's try 2.26, and let's see how that goes. Oops, still too high, i move it down some more. Point two two. Actually, that's pretty good. Too much flagging can cause skip stitches and thread breakage and needle breakage, so it's best to have that just skimming above, just like it is, just holding it in place, but not pushing it down. And finally, it was at 0.22 what I, on my machine. Every machine's going to be different. Not going to let it cut. And then I'm going to raise the needle and go back again. That way I don't have a jump stitch I have to deal with or a cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove everything, and we will go back to the sewing machine and finish our bowl. Goes off easily. I'll remove this later. Okay, let's go back to the machine. Let's go back about an inch. Now, as I start, 
I'm going to start raising this a little bit in order to start forming the bowl. Okay, and I want just a, probably one or two rows of, actually I only want one row of the wrap along the roping. another few inches okay Do that there just holding this up see how I'm holding this up and that's going to start to form the ridge And it really does help to have that open toe foot. Unwrap about six, eight inches, and then coil or wrap with the fabric. Continue. Okay. I'm coming around to where it started, I just want to make sure that that gets caught. See how this lip is starting to form? Okay, here's a couple things I didn't mention before. That if you notice that you've missed, as this bowl gets deeper, it's going to be harder to fix anything that you've missed. So if you notice that you've, not, you've missed and you've got a split in your rope, stop and, and fix it right away. Uh, because once this bowl gets so deep, you're, it's going to be almost impossible to get in here and do more stitching inside this area here. So another thing too, while this is stitching, if you are holding back on this, on the leading rope, the, the loose rope, that's going to help make the sides deeper. Because they'll come to a point where it's kind of hard to handle. I think I'm not going to go too much deeper. I think I'm going to do a total of six rows of the rope. Then I'll do another another two rows of... of uh, a wrap. Okay, I'll be back when I'm ready to start wrapping. I'm ready to wrap the last two layers of the rope. So I just simply put that at a 45 degree angle and just pinned it in right there. And then I'm going to wrap a little bit. Okay, stick a pin. 
in here. And just hold it in place. Okay. So again, I'm going, just like before, I'm going to do the same thing. So give this a slight tug. Now, I don't want to run over that pin, so I'm going to move this pin this way. Just try to keep the bowl right in the middle, or just to, just try to keep the the center of the two ropes just as close as you can to the center. that anymore. Put that here just to hold it. And as I continue. And as you get close and coil it, do some more. And I'll finish this off camera and then I will come back and show you how to finish the coil. Or at least I like to finish the coil. Okay, I've come to the point where I need to join two pieces of fabric. You don't have to sew them together. You simply, I'm going to put this inside okay, and it's going to start to catch. Keep going around. Okay. All right, I'm just going now I'm going to do another section and just stitch over it. Okay. Here we go. And actually, I'm about ready to end. I think I'm going to finish this bowl now. So I, here is my ending point right there. Okay, so I'm going to stitch a little further. wrap a little bit more but I want to end it right there so what I'm going to do here is now cut my rope now there's different ways of ending some people will take this and wrap it back like this cut it and then leave like a little loop I don't want that and I'm not that good at this so I'm just simply going to cut the rope. Let's see, it's going to finish about there. So I'm cutting the rope. See, if you, if you fit, this is easier with the fabric, to be honest with you, now to finish. So I'm going to unwrap a little bit more. Okay. Now, there's the end of the rope. <laughs> I'm at the end of my rope. I used to say that to my kids. Okay, and then I'm going to just cut about two inches beyond it. And I'm going to continue to coil and twist and twist and twist. Tuck the little ends in. Okay, and now that out of the way and let's finish. And 
then I just simply take that pin out. As this gets a little tricky right here. So you just want to keep stitching. You might need a stiletto. Okay. Okay, and push this in. It's going to stitch over top. Put this in, let it zigzag so that the right swing of the zigzag simply coils off and then, and then back stitch. And I'm going to back stitch that a few times. Okay, done. Let's take a look at this. Alright. There, it just. Where's the lens? There it is. So. Here's the part that it finished. So I just it just gradually went down. Sometimes you can cut that at an angle. Just clip my threads and actually I'm happy with it. Now the, I'm new at this and I haven't made a bowl in like 15 years or so. And that's where it joined. And actually it turned out fine. And then just sort of, you have to block it just like anything else. You want to take where the ends are and just push them down so that the bowl, wrong way. And there's the bowl. It's finished. And I think it turned out really cute. So is it, it's very sturdy. Very, very sturdy. I just have to do a little bit of shaping to it. I probably, uh, when, now, I'm not crazy about this. Um, I could take the time to pull all this off, which I probably will in front of the TV. Uh, but, yeah, you know me, I just tend to get a little anal retentive. You could also take some felt and just glue it to the bottom so you have a nice sturdy stand. So it's nice and felted and it covers everything, all the little things. Okay. And then over here, I've just got a little extra, so I'm just going to trim it off. Right close to the stitching. There. And the more you have, the more you use it, the more rustic looking it'll get. The cleaner bowls actually, and yeah, I could do a little better with getting this straight. But you know what? I think I can block it, just sort of dampen it and shape it and let it dry, and it will be just fine. You want to pick up, the only thing is you got to pick up all the little, clip up all these little threads. There's tons of them <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but that turned out really darling. Now, I've always wondered, could you embroider this? Not on, no, I don't think so. <laughs> what I would probably do is embroider a motif on a piece of tooling and just take fabric glue and put any kind of design you want on the side. But I think that looks nice. It's great for holding keys and whatnot. Pieces of fabric, tools, whatever you like. You can make it as big or as small as you like. Although I have to warn you, the bigger it is, the easier it is to work. Okay.